Disappointment either destroys you or drives you, mm. and you have to decide which one it's going to be. If you don't consciously decide, there's always going to be more BS for you to deal with. And I think but that's why I think, you know, when I do my events, the reason I do the 12 hours a day, it's not because <laughs> I like talking. It's just that I can tell you something all day long, or I can get you to build the muscle. Yes. And the build of the muscle is by experiencing. And I always tell people, a, yes. belief, a yes. belief's a poor substitute for an experience. Like, I could have a belief about you, but now I experience you. So I get to know who you are, right? The same thing's true as like, you have a belief about China, you have a belief about working out. So I try to give people experiences that are so profound. And then, you know, the, the studies they did, they found people 12 months later, 11 months later, we're still in the middle of COVID, they did my digital seminar. And you know, they measured my body like, the amount of times I jump, I jump a thousand times in a day, and I weigh 282 pounds, and I come down four times the body weight, so it's a thousand pounds times a thousand pounds of pressure. I, my lactic acid, if you've ever been with a friend and you're running and you can't talk, the point you can't talk is a level four of lactic acid. I'm in an 18 and still speaking. So they decided to do that on my audience, and they found an interesting pattern. This is the same group that works with some of the, you know, Super Bowl champions and some of the Stanley Cup champions and so forth. There's a ratio in the body of testosterone versus cortisol, the stress hormone. And when the ratio is balanced, they call it the championship bloodline or bloodstream. It literally gets you to follow through. So when they did my audience in my live seminar, they found that people literally mirror me all the way through the experience. That's phenomenal. Biochemically. That is phenomenal. But wow. then we did it on, we did it, you know, because all of a sudden, they, overnight they said to me, you know, we're going to San Francisco and the governor of California says, you can only have 10 people and we have 15,000. So I was like, we'll go to Vegas. They'll never <laughs> shut down Vegas. They shut down Vegas. So I was like, okay, we'll do 1,500 movie theaters with 10 people in them. They shut down the movie theaters. Like, okay, we'll go to a church in Houston. I got a buddy, I'll rent his church for 15,000 people. They're not gonna keep Costco open and shut down the church. They kept Costco open and shut down the <laughs> church. So I finally said, okay, I'm not gonna do some crappy little webinar. So I get this vision, I'm gonna build this facility with 20 foot high LED screens, 50 feet wide all around me. I'm gonna call Eric Yon at Zoom. I'm gonna get him from 1,000 up to 25,000 people so I can interact with people live in real time. I'm gonna build an app so they can shake it. And the more people do it, the louder it gets so it's real. So I built this whole thing. So now we're doing bigger events than ever in our entire history, but they did the same measurements on them in different parts of the world and saw the exact same mirroring process. Wow. And the average person- Even the, digitally, even just digitally. to clarify that, yeah. 71% um, of the people, they had 71% drop in negative emotions, 53% improvement in positive emotions, and 11 months later, in the middle of COVID, it held. Because it's a biochemical change. So when people say, oh, I'm trying, I've read, that's, I write books because it's, it's an easy entry point to people. There's so much you can learn from mm -hmm. a book. But there's nothing like the experience. That's why I do the events. Mm -hmm. And like this last two years, because of COVID, I did two like six day free events. We had 800,000 people attend for six days, just four weeks ago, because I just wanted people to have answers where they are. Mm -hmm. And then people start to see, they get momentum, but it's hard to do just reading something or watching a couple of, you know, you know, 20 yeah. minute or 15 minute or five minute little pieces Video. on YouTube. Yeah. Those are great, they might inspire you, but a transformation requires immersion. It's like, yes. if you ask the average person, did you study a foreign language in school? Most people, oh yeah, <laughs> high school, college, speak it, they don't. <laughs> but if you turn around and you said, okay, what if you wanna learn Italian and I just took you to Rome and dumped yeah. you off for six weeks yeah. with no teacher, you're gonna come back six weeks later speaking you know, Italian. Yeah. So it's immersion. Mm -hmm. And if you wanna master something, I think that's the thing most people don't do. Yes. They read a little bit, they listen a little bit, they dip in and out. They don't go day and night, night and day in total immersion in something that transforms them and yeah. also, something that makes them push through their fears. Yes. Because in the end, that's the only thing that stops me. Everybody's got a story. I didn't know this person. I don't have the resources. They have all the things they don't have. Mm -hmm. But if you're resourceful, you can get the money, you can get the time, you can get the energy, you can get anything you want. And you've got to get over your fear to be resourceful. So we do experiences that are so physiologically profound mm -hmm. that those fears do not stop you anymore. Yeah. And that's, what, that's how we get people to get, you know, 10 years later, they're still transformed from an experience that was one weekend. First of all, if you're concerned about COVID, according to CDC, and I have this in my new book, the number one you know, issue besides age, obviously, the number one piece is being overweight right, or obese. That is number one. And just this week, CNN, New York Times, for the first time, two years later, are coming and saying, you can reduce your risk if you take care of your body, right? Yeah. Do you know what number two is, according to the CDC? Mm -hmm. Fear. 
Because when you get fearful, it changes your breathing, your body temperature, your tension in your body. All these things can create a trigger of reactions, hormones in your body that make you crazy. So when I say fear is physical, here's what I mean. You, uh, fear is physical, by the way, so is courage. Emotions are physical. If you're really scared, have you ever been at that point where you're like freaked out about something and you can't quite fully swallow or you got that Certainly. feeling in your gut? Certainly. But courage is also physical. That's what you're talking about. Like it's like I trained myself from a very young age that the number one thing I had to do so I would follow through on the things we're talking about here is I had to have a mind and body that were strong together. That every day I was going to do something to strengthen my body, even if it was just 10 minutes or 15 minutes, something was going to shift me physiologically to do that. And so I, you know, I get scared or I get frustrated and I go on a run, I go on a sprint and I wasn't in shape, didn't matter. I pushed myself beyond where I was comfortable with. I go lift weights and I pushed beyond where I was comfortable with. And when you do that, everything in your nervous system changes. Because all of a sudden, when you face something and you push beyond the comfort zone, you get stronger and stronger. Even a little bit each day changes things. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Courage, that's not, you're not afraid. Because there'd be no need for courage. Mm -hmm. Courage is you're scared shitless, but you do it anyway. Yeah. And so training your body, and you and I both do this, right? We train intensely yep. because we know this is the resource through which my mind's going to try to make decisions. And then the second thing is every day you got to feed your brain, your mind. Because if you don't, Crap is going in there automatically. We all know that, right? Yeah. I mean, today it's chasing you because we all know the news knows they're not bad people, they're good people. They're just doing their job. Their job is make sure they make as much money for their shareholders. Right. And they know one formula works. And it's pretty obvious these last two years more than ever. If it bleeds, it leads. Mm -hmm. If it produces fear, more people watch. It's because we all have a two million year old brain that's mm -hmm. always looking for what's wrong, what can hurt us. Mm -hmm. But your two million year old brain is not going to make you happy, right? Yeah. You have to take control of that two million year old brain and start to direct consciously what you want your life to be. So yes. changing your body radically by a workout, by a run, by a push, by whatever you're going to do, shifting by feeding your brain every single day, and then making sure every day you're taking some form of action towards a compelling future. Like, mm -hmm. what am I going to make better? Mm -hmm. If you have nothing to look forward to, you're going to be pissed off, you're going to be frustrated, you're going to be depressed, you're going to be overwhelmed. And in those emotional states, even though you're a smart person and you know lots of things, you won't use anything you know. Mm. So to me, the leverage to changing somebody's life is always starting with the human body. If I started to speak to you and I spoke more at uh, this tempo mm -hmm. and I said, yeah, Ed, I really think people should get their act together and <laughs> make this their best year ever right? <laughs> i feel terrible in my body now i'm not saying everybody needs to talk fast or loud like me that's my mm. own physiology but it's kind mm. of trained but everyone has different gears mm. and when you're low gears like you can be in a great relationship somebody you totally love and you're both in a great physical state emotional state everything's great you both get a little love from taking the kids to 20 soccer practices and cash flow problems in the business and yeah. all that stuff. And all of a sudden, same love doesn't feel like the same love. You still love each other, but it doesn't come across. Mm -hmm. And if you're both stressed out, then it creates problems in the relationship. So the most important factor in your life is the ability to manage your mental, emotional state. Mm -hmm. It is the one thing you have complete control of once you learn how. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes just the daily discipline. And after, and it's not even discipline, it just becomes habit. To say, I'm not going to live in this lousy pace. I'm not going to put up with it. I know what to do. Let me do it. Let me move forward. But that's why, you know, I do programs and events where I immerse people. Yeah. Because, you know, you and I can talk about this team and it's kind of nod your head. But if I put you in an experience, Correct. I always tell people a, a belief is a poor substitute for an experience. You can yeah. have a belief about China. I take you to China. You're going to have an experience. It's very different. So, true. so I think human beings need to put themselves more in experiences. There, a lot of us today, especially with COVID, being stuck at home and doing business from home, a lot of people are stuck in their head. Yeah. I tell me, get in your head, you're dead. You're just going in circles. Get in your head. You got to get that body and that energy moving, and then your head will start to work as well.